Hi, everyone. Welcome back to another episode of Biohacking with Brittany. I'm your host, Brittany Ford. And today I have a fantastic lineup of a bunch of questions from my listeners. So the topics in this one are just full range. It goes from everything from nutrition to supplements to alcohol intake and prescription drugs and a whole bunch of things. So there's a lot coming for you. As always, if you have any questions you would like me answered and you want to be featured on any of these episodes, just send me a message on Instagram and I will answer them for you. Before we jump in, I want to read a podcast review that came in a couple weeks ago, which I am really happy to see from somebody in Ukraine. So this person writes, the title is a must listen health podcast. And they write, if you're interested in optimizing your health and wellness, then the biohacking with Brittany podcast is a must listen. Brittany provides a wealth of valuable insights and practical tips on how to improve your physical and mental performance, drawing from the latest research and cutting edge biohacking techniques. Her engaging and upbeat style makes the show a pleasure to listen to, and you'll come away feeling inspired and empowered to take your health to the next level. Thank you so much for that review. I love these reviews. If you feel called to do so and leave one, I really appreciate it. I read them all. I think we have over a hundred now and they make a big difference for podcasters. And if you have a podcast, you know this because people get to see them and it really helps your show get seen by others and shared and all sorts of things like that. Yeah. I appreciate the time it takes. I've left reviews on my favorite podcasts, even if it's just a couple sentences or even just five stars, it makes a difference. So thank you. Before we get started, I wanted to share with you something that happened on the weekend. I, and I'm sharing this because I, it was just like such a cute, happy moment for myself, but I was at a night market here locally. I'm in Vancouver in Canada and I was at a night market and there was stalls of like food and beer and alcohol and all sorts of like homemade goods and little businesses, that type of night market. So it's really cool because you get to support locally. And I was walking past this one stand and it was a soap stand. And I saw this guy behind the counter and it'd be, it would be hilarious if he was listening to this. But anyway, I saw this guy standing behind a counter and he like caught my eye. And I remember just thinking like, this is a lot of eye contact for a stranger. <laughs> and then he, anyway, so I just kept walking. And then he was like biohacking Brittany. And he said it out loud. And I like, turned my head and I was like, what? I was like, what did you just say? (laughs) I was like, how do you know that? And it was really cool because that is the first time I've ever had anybody in public know me from my online presence and not know me in person. So basically like a stranger knowing you without you knowing them and like they, he knows my business. He knows, he follows me on Instagram. We started talking all of this stuff. And it was so, so cool because the chances of that happening are so low. Like they are so low. Think about how big of a audience you have to have for one person to be able to recognize you who you've never met before. And I had no, I don't know. I was just so taken back by it. I was so shocked. And it was like a really cool moment because it just goes to show you how consistent work and perseverance and grit really does pay off. And I always said to myself, the moment somebody recognizes me in public is the moment I've made it. So it was so cool for that to happen on Friday night because I did not think it would happen at this stage in my business and career, but it was Oh, I was so happy about it. And it was just a very like warm hearted moment that made me feel so recognized for the work that I've done and the effort that I've put in over years. I have such a small business, but to be able to have a moment like that was just really, really cool. So, so proud. And I'm sure, you know, when I go to the biohacking conference in Orlando in a few weeks, 
I'm sure it'll happen a bunch, but that's so different, right? Like you're in a space where you're at a biohacking health conference that I already know a ton of the companies going. I know a ton of brands. I know a ton of other content creators going. So it's so different versus like being in a night market and someone's like, Hey, I follow you on Instagram. That's just wild. So if you are going to the biohacking conference, I will be there for all three days. Definitely hit me up, message me if you want to chat, meet in person. I would love that. I am going with Katie Type A. If you don't know her, she is another content creator in the biohacking and health space. She's big on YouTube. That's kind of her main platform. She has over, I think, 30,000 followers now. And she does a bunch of different stuff. So she reviews a lot of health products and a lot of biohacking tech and gear. So if you've like thought of buying anything within the biohacking space, I guarantee she's made a video reviewing the product. So definitely check her out on YouTube. She's also on Instagram, but I'm going with her. I'm staying with her in the hotel and that's going to be so fun. We're going to do a bunch of, we're going to do a podcast episode together, a bunch of content, you know, influencer, fun stuff like that. And I'm really excited because this is my first year going and yeah, I don't really know what to expect, to be honest. I also haven't been to Orlando. I haven't been to Florida in a very long time. So I'm excited for that. I will be back in Florida in October as well in Miami. If you live in Miami and you want to meet up, let me know. I'm going to the Biohacking Congress conference. (laughs) So there's two different ones that happen in the States. So Biohacking Congress and Biohacking Conference. Yeah, it's a little much in terms of titles, but I'm going to both. One's in Orlando this year, one's in Miami. So I am super excited for that. So stay tuned. I will definitely share a lot about my experience. And yeah, I'm so excited to connect with like-minded people. It's going to be very, very interesting. Okay. Before we dive into this Q&A episode, a quick shout out to the sponsors of this week. First and foremost, AG1 Athletic Greens. You know what this is. So if there's any product that you should take, it's AG1. I love using it because I think that it really just covers my bases. And this is what I recommend to most people. I just sent some to my mom because she doesn't like to take a lot of supplements. She doesn't like swallowing like pills and stuff like that. So this AG1 athletic greens is just a powder. So she adds it to water. She has a glass every single day and it gives her a bunch of vitamins, minerals, enzymes, probiotics, everything she kind of needs to help her on her day which I think is super important. So if you're traveling, it's also great. It really just like helps with immunity, helps keep your gut microbiome really strong and that type of thing, which does matter when you're in planes and exposed to all sorts of things. So AG1 is my favorite. I take it every single day. I have the container actually, like the canister that sits in your fridge. I take a scoop out, I pour it in my water, my water bottle. I actually just got a new water bottle as well. It's a blender bottle that is made out of steel because I don't do plastic anymore. And so that's what I take. And also a shout out to Inside Tracker. So I talked about this on my Instagram last week. I had some surprising results from my Inside Tracker test. So for those who don't know, Inside Tracker is a at home test, blood test, and they, a nurse will come and take your blood and do it for you, even in Canada. So you can do this. It's great because you can get so much tested that your doctor might not test you for. So they do vitamins, minerals, and hormones, and they just added in some hormones specifically designed for women. So they do estradiol, they do progesterone, and they also do your TSH levels, which is your thyroid stimulating hormone. So I love Inside Tracker. What was interesting is my estradiol, was, which is like a form of active form of estrogen, was very high, like off the charts high. So this is cause for concern for sure. When I got this tested, it was at the beginning of May and my hemorrhagic cyst was still prevalent, more prevalent at that time than it is now. And when I looked into it, 
Turns out your cysts, these types of cysts can produce hormones in the body, especially when they are by the ovaries because the ovaries produce hormones as well. So I'm hoping that my high estrogen is in relation to that because I don't really present with symptoms that are in relation to having high estrogen. So high estrogen, we typically see in women with endometriosis, which I don't have and I've been tested for, women with very heavy periods, so like four, seven days, lots of bleeding, lots of liquid, which I definitely don't have. I have more lighter periods. Women with shorter cycles, other symptoms are like breast enlargement, breast tenderness, and that type of thing. So I don't have any of that. So I was really surprised, but I am going to test again, probably in June, maybe July, if I if I can't fit it in. And yeah, because I think it's important to double check on that because if it is that level, I will need to take some more steps to figure out how to lower that, which is a conversation for another day. So all this to say, if you want to get tested with Inside Tracker, I really recommend doing it. My discount code is Biohacking Brittany, and it's linked on my shop page on my website. Same with AG1 Athletic Greens. Like, go check it out. Everything is linked on my shop page with all my discount codes. So it's all in one place for you. All right. On to the question and answer part of the show. Woohoo. <laughs> okay. So this first question comes from, maybe we'll just keep it to first names for just to keep people's name, like privacy. My first question comes from Sarah in California. She asks, is berberine a good replacement for Ozempic or metformin? Why or why not? How should it be used? And what is its impact on fertility? So this is so interesting because I think if you're on TikTok, you know where this is coming from. There are a lot of TikTok videos right now circulating saying that berberine is nature's Ozempic. And for those who don't know, Ozempic is a weight loss prescription drug that a lot of big celebrities are now using. So And the way that I kind of found out about this as well was through TikTok. A lot of people commenting on like the Kylie Jenner's of the world saying like they're using Ozempic for weight loss and all of these different things. And originally Ozempic was actually created for people with diabetes. And now it's being used as a weight loss drug for people who are not diabetic necessarily, or who are not obese or super overweight, but just to slim down. So there's a lot of pros and cons to that. There's a lot of dialogue happening. And now people are starting to say berberine is a replacement for that or a nature's Ozempic. So that's where this question comes from. And I think it's important that she talks about metformin, which I'm also going to talk about as well. So First of all, Sarah, thank you for your question. Let's explain what berberine is. So berberine is a natural, a naturally occurring compound found in various plants and has gained attention for its potential therapeutic effects. However, it's important to know that berberine should not be considered a direct replacement for prescription medications like Ozempic or Metformin. Prescription medications have obviously undergone a extensive clinical trials and have established safety and efficacy profiles. However, that being said, berberine has shown promise in managing blood sugar levels and improving insulin sensitivity, which are essential factors in the management of diabetes. Some studies have even shown comparable effects to metformin. So for example, a study published in the journal Metabolism found that berberine was as effective as metformin in reducing HbA1c levels, a marker of long-term blood sugar control, and fasting blood glucose levels in individuals with type 2 diabetes. Okay, let's back up for a second. So the dialogue that you see on TikTok that's like, oh, azempic and berberine, like the same thing. A lot of people are correcting these videos in the comments and they're saying, actually, berberine is closer in its chemical structure and how it works in the body to metformin than it is ozempic. And those people are correct. So I think people have gotten it a little bit twisted with what they think berberine can do on 
the blood glucose levels and also helping with long-term blood sugar control and ozempic. But this is actually more, like I said, of what like metformin does. And when we talk about HbA1c levels, this is really important. So that is your blood sugar over the last 90 days when you get that tested. And it's in a percentage. So like I said earlier in the show, if you get tested with Inside Tracker, they actually test for HbA1c levels. So I just did my test. Mine was 5.0%, which is a very, very healthy level. I think when I've seen other people like Ben Greenfield do it, I think he's been at like a 4.9 or 4.8. That's the lowest I've ever seen. I have never personally hit that. 5.0 has always been my lowest. And I'm very, very happy with that because that's far from even being pre-diabetic. So, however, it would be interesting to take berberine for 90 days or if even longer and see if I can lower it further. So when it comes to using berberine, it's advisable to follow the dosage recommendations by, like that are on the bottle or that your healthcare professional says. Typically, it comes in a capsule or a tablet form, and the dosage varies depending on what you need it for. So I do have berberine. I will, I forget the, oh, it's so bad. I forget the name of the brand that I'm taking right now. I can picture it. It's in my bathroom. What's interesting about the one that I have, it actually says to take it at night. It says to take two at night. So I've been trying to do that and I will link it in the show notes once I remember the name of the one that I take. Are you tired of feeling out of sync with your body's natural rhythm? Do you struggle with menstrual cycle related issues like fatigue, mood swings, and bloating? If you're looking to optimize your health and well being, look no further than the Ebb and Flow Cycle Guide. This comprehensive guide is designed to help you better understand and work with your menstrual cycle so you can improve your energy levels, reduce PMS symptoms, and gain a deeper understanding of your body. With in-depth information on each phase of the menstrual cycle, you'll learn how to adjust your diet, exercise routine, and self-care practices to better align with your body's needs. One of the biggest benefits of the Ebb and Flow Cycle Guide is its user-friendly format. The guide is easy to follow and provides clear instructions on how to optimize your health throughout each phase of your cycle. Plus, it's packed with valuable information and insights that you won't find anywhere else. So whether you're a seasoned biohacker or you're just starting out, the Ebb and Flow Cycle Guide is the perfect tool to help you optimize your health and live in harmony with your body's natural rhythm. And with my expertise and guidance, you can trust that you're getting the best information and advice available. So why wait? Head over to biohackingbrittany.com to get your copy of the Ebb and Flow Cycle Guide and start living your best life today. So let's talk about fertility. Regarding the impact on fertility, research on berberine's direct effects is limited. Fertility is a complex issue influenced by multiple factors. We know this if you listen to this podcast including hormonal balance and reproductive health. One study published in the Reproductive Biology and Endocrinology Journal said suggested that berberine may have a positive effect on polycystic ovarian syndrome, which is PCOS, a condition that can affect fertility in women, which is what I have, unfortunately. <laughs> the study found that berberine improved menstrual re- regularity and hormone levels in women with PCOS. However, more research is needed to fully understand its impact. I think this is interesting. So as somebody who low-key has PCOS, and I say low-key because it's not officially diagnosed, I feel like this is a recommendation for women with PCOS because a lot of women with PCOS have difficulty with insulin resistance and blood sugar control. And this, they tend to go hand in hand. So I think that's why that recommendation would be there. I don't think it is a general recommendation for women who might have irregular periods or an imbalance of hormones. So overall, my suggestion is definitely try it. I think if you've been tested and your blood sugar levels aren't great or your HbA1c levels are a little too high, I would definitely suggest trying it. Follow what the dosage is recommended on the bottle and talk to a professional healthcare consultant or doctor about it as well. 
And overall, no, it is not a replacement for Ozempic. It's not even really a, a replacement for metformin. It just kind of does the same thing, but it has less research behind it. So there's that. Okay, next question. This comes from Mark in New York, and he asks, is alcohol healthy for you in any quantity? How much should be consumed? Are there specific types of alcohol that are better for you? And what about women? Well, 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 thank you for this question. So this is funny because last week I made a video about the health benefits of wine for women. And some people were so upset about it. (laughs) It was ridiculous. Like some people were like, I can't believe you would post this. I didn't expect this to come from you. Like all of this type of stuff. And I ended up taking the post down, which I don't know if I should have done that. It just made me think a lot about it, I guess. And so my overall, before we get into kind of like what the science is, my overall thinking with this is that alcohol is okay when you can drink responsibly first and foremost, and it doesn't trigger any type of dependence or addiction. That is so important. And if there's any type of reliance on it, if it's a coping mechanism of any sort, I don't think it's appropriate to have. And that goes with anything, anything you're kind of using to soothe any type of emotion you might be feeling, I think is a cause for concern. Do I think it's healthy for you? Not necessarily. Like if you look at what alcohol and wine and beer and things like that are made out of, like obviously not. Like I I think it causes... I think it can cause metabolic damage, cellular damage for sure. And I definitely don't glaze over that. I think where I'm coming from when I think about wine and I think about the benefits of it, I think there is a time and place for it. And I don't think it's as black and white as people would like it to be. And I think when I posted last week being like, hey, here are some of the benefits of wine. I think some people got upset because they want this clear cut answer on it. And they want someone like me to be this extreme health model for them with zero tolerance for the fact that I'm human and have a life outside of my business and outside of biohacking. And so I think it's interesting from that perspective of Part of me feels like it's not fair to hold people to such high standards. And part of me does understand where they're coming from. So the way that I personally handle alcohol has been something I've I've thought a lot about, like a lot. This is not something I take lightly. And I've slowly started moving away from alcohol since 2019. And the reason why is because in 2019, I actually got my aura ring and my aura ring was the first thing that actually showed me the serious detrimental effects of alcohol on my health. And before that, like, obviously, you know, right? You know, when you overdrink, you know, when you're hungover, your head hurts, your stomach hurts, it's acidic you throw up, like you say things you shouldn't say, you eat a bunch of junk food, like we've all been there, drunk, hungover, all sorts of things. But I think when I had my aura ring it opened my eyes to the effects of alcohol on my heart. So my heart rate was very, very high when I would drink, is very high when I drink. My HRV plummets. My sleep scores are terrible. And once I started to see this data, I was like, wow, like this is actually what's happening. You know, like to have an average, let's say HRV 80 and above is kind of like where I like it. For my HRV to be in the 20s and 30s when I drink alcohol and my heart rate to be in the 60s when my heart rate's usually in the 40s, oh, like it really made me take a step back. And so since 2019, now we're in 2023, every year I've been slowly drinking less and less. So it kind of started with taking a month off and then another month off, and then another month off. And then I started, I think it was 2021. I started doing like 75 hard, a bunch of different times in my life. 
And so then it was like three months off and three months off and three months off. And then we had COVID. So I wasn't really drinking and going out anyway. And so slowly and slowly, I've been reducing how much I drink every single year. Now I'm at a point where I drink in the summer from you know May to August. And when I say I drink in the summer, that means that I drink on the weekends and I will limit how many drinks I have at a night. Ideally three or four, that's it. Maximum, like maybe just one, but like maximum three or four. And then I typically will drink on the holidays. So Christmas, maybe my birthday. And that's kind of it, honestly. That's kind of where I'm at right now. So if you look at it from like January to December, this year so far, like I didn't drink from January to March. I was in Costa Rica for basically all of March and I drank when I was there. It was my honeymoon. I got married. Obviously, I'm going to drink and enjoy myself. I didn't drink all of April and now May I drank, June I'm drinking, July I will, August I will. September is my birthday, so maybe I will for that and I'm going to California. And then I will probably take October, November and half of December off until Christmas. So I think that for me, that's kind of what works right now is kind of like this idea of like the summer weekends and significant holidays. Otherwise I don't drink. And I should actually count how many days that is if I were to drink every day, because I guarantee you it's, it's probably, I don't even know, like a quarter or less of the year. And that's a lot of time off. So this is kind of what I like. I like the ebb and flow of really taking a step back in the winter and then drinking more in the summer. However, it's different for everybody. So back to my original post of like health benefits, there are some health benefits, right? And I'm not saying that the negative, like the negative parts or not negative benefits, but like, I'm not saying that the negative impact of it outweighs or doesn't outweigh the health impact, but I am saying that there are certain health impacts and health benefits of it. And that shouldn't necessarily be glazed over. I think all in all, you need to find what works for you. And I don't think you should be shamed if you do drink because I just don't think that's fair either. The general guideline for moderate alcohol intake is up to one drink per day for women and up to two drinks per day for men. And the impact of alcohol on health is a topic that has actually been extensively studied. So while moderate alcohol consumption has been associated with potential health benefits, it's important to emphasize moderation. It's essential to remember that these guidelines refer to standard drinks, which typically contain 14 grams of pure alcohol. So let's talk about the different types of alcohol and their potential health benefits. Some research suggests that moderate consumption of certain types of alcohol, such as red wine, may offer additional health benefits. Red wine contains antioxidants such as resveratrol, which has been linked to heart health. It's believed that resveratrol helps reduce inflammation and may has may have a positive effect on cholesterol levels and blood pressure. However, it's important to note that these benefits are seen with moderate consumption and may not outweigh the risks associated with excessive alcohol intake, which is completely what I agree with. When it comes to women and alcohol, it's important to consider factors such as body size, metabolism, and overall health. Women tend to metabolize alcohol differently than men, and their bodies may be more susceptible to the negative impacts and effects of alcohol. Additionally, excessive alcohol consumption has been linked to an increased risk of breast cancer in women. It's crucial to understand that excessive alcohol consumption can have detrimental effects on various aspects of health, including liver damage, increased cancer risk, addiction, and adverse effects on mental health. It's always recommended to prioritize overall well-being and make informed choices about alcohol consumption and obviously talk to a professional healthcare provider. So I think that's basically answering all of your questions, Mark. Again, I have some like a routine that works for me right now and the lifestyle that I want to lead. Will it always be this way? Probably not especially as I do more of a preconception cleanse and detox in the fall, I definitely will not be drinking during that time. And 
I can see myself getting to a point where it's a few times a year for me and on occasion. And that's probably what's going to happen in the next couple of years. And that, and I'll probably just sustain that for life because actually, you know, at the end of the day, as someone who's taken multiple months off of not drinking alcohol in a row, you feel so good when you don't drink like that. And you like, if weight loss or the gym is important to you or athletic performance, like the alcohol really, really can get in the way for that. So I don't even know if I like gave a conclusive opinion on what I do and what I don't do. I think I'm like kind of have, I'm on the fence with it, but I think it is good to shed light on both sides. And I also think it's important not to shame people for drinking because again, like you can live your life. And if that's what you want to do, by all means do it. Just watch how much you drink and watch the type of alcohol that you're drinking as well. My next partner I want to talk about is Athletic Greens. So I take AG1 by Athletic Greens literally every single day. And I first gave AG1 a try when I was traveling to Costa Rica. I really wanted something to support my gut health, boost my energy, keep my immune system in check, and really just support me while I was traveling and not home. I quickly fell in love with it. And now that I'm back in Canada, I still take it every single day. And I take it in the morning before I have any type of coffee. Typically, it's like the first thing I have in the morning. And it makes me feel just fantastic. I feel like I'm starting my day off on the right foot. I feel like I'm covering all of my nutrition needs right from the get-go, which is super important and such a healthier way to start than just having coffee on an empty stomach right away. So I just, I'm just obsessed with taking it. And if you want to take ownership of your health, today is a good time to start. Athletic Greens is giving you a free, wow, one year supply of vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. So those are the same travel packs that I took when I was flying. Go to athleticgreens.com slash biohacking with Brittany. That's athleticgreens.com slash biohacking with Brittany to check it out today. It's also linked in my show notes and on my website everywhere. All right. The next question. This one's fun. The healing web. Ooh, this, the controversy, man, I feel like I've just been posting controversial things lately. I don't know why. And I like it and I don't like it (laughs) because it gets so much attention and then if you've ever had anything go somewhat viral, you know what it's like to get that much attention is like, it's great, but then it also comes with criticism. And so it's, it's a little much sometimes, but let's talk about the healing web. Let's talk about how it works. So Lisa, Texas, I uh, would love to go to Texas. She says, what is the healing web? How does it work? I saw your posts. Can you explain it more? Okay. Let's talk about this. So The healing web is honestly really hard to describe without seeing it. And let's back up for a a second and talk about where this question came from. So I posted something on TikTok last week and Instagram last week, and it was the video of this poster that I have in my office. And this poster is called the healing web. And if you haven't seen this and you are remotely into biohacking, holistic medicine at all, whatever it is, whether it's herbs, supplements, exercise, fitness, cryotherapy, saunas, whatever, whatever you're in, like there's so many different things that people are into. You need to go and look at this map slash web. It's going to blow your mind. I first found out about this on TikTok. I think a few months ago because someone else posted a video of it. And I saw this thing and I was like, what is this? Immediately went, downloaded a PDF version, decided I couldn't read it. It wasn't, I needed it blown up big enough. Found the guy who invented it, bought his poster. Now it's the poster on my wall. And you are probably going to do the same once you hear about this. So the healing web This is something that's created by somebody named Dylan Monroe. It is essentially the, an outline of a 
the most common health conditions that people have and all of the causes and ways of healing it on one map and web. On the right side, when you look at it, it has holistic medicine. And on the left side, it has Western medicine. So in the middle, it has all of these different health conditions. And then there's a web of a bunch of different lines that connect everything. And it's all color coordinated, kind of hard to explain. So the video I posted last week, if you're listening to this podcast right now and you haven't seen it, go to my Instagram and take a look at the basically piece of paper that you see. It's a reel and it says pregnancy. So I showed a video of the pregnancy version of this in terms of what holistic medicine says about pregnancy and what Western medicine says about pregnancy. And wow, the people, like the comments, the shares, the DMs about this thing, I was not ready for it. And then I was like, oh, I'm going to post this on TikTok. It'll be fine, whatever. So right now on TikTok, as of today, Monday, it has over 102,000 views. And that's what, like, I haven't promoted it at all. That's organic. Like, I don't even, do I even want to click on it? I think it has over 5,000 likes, 200 comments. It's crazy. So I really suggest going to take a look at this. And it's linked on my website. So if you go to biohackingbrittany.com slash shop, or I think it's slash pages slash shop, you can scroll down and go down to where it says the healing web and click on that. And you will be able to go to the poster there. It's wild. It's absolutely wild. And if you are curious about it, like I was when I first found out, even just searching online, the healing web, it's going to come up. You can also buy it on Etsy, but that's not from the founder. So I would personally support the founder and the creator of it and just buy from the creator. And he actually has a YouTube video about how he came up with this concept. And it's very interesting. So you should go check it out. I don't want to give it away, but it's worth listening to him explain how it works and how he thought of it. Cause it's wild. Like I, I can't even explain it to you without showing it to you. I I don't even like to look at it on a daily basis because there's so much information on it and there's so much that I don't even understand. Like there's so much that I don't even understand. If you are at all into like, I don't even know, I don't want to say being woke because now there's criticism of that word, but being awake and in terms of big pharma and kind of what's happening in the world and all of this. I don't want to say darkness, but like it is kind of darkness and underlying motives for everything. You need to take a look at this because it's going to blow your mind in terms of everything that it says. Like, for example, Illuminati diet is on there. I don't know what that is. What does that mean? Someone explain that to me. Talks about alchemy. Talk, I'm just reading it from where I'm sitting right now in my office. It talks about oh gosh, I don't even, ball sacrifice. Am I even saying that right? And planned parenthood, sterilization. Like I, this is deep guys. This is deep stuff. And is this a podcast about that stuff? No. (laughs) Will it be one day? I don't know. But I think it is worth going to look at this healing web. If your eyes are somewhat open to how the world works get ready for this. And what's interesting, which I didn't expect is on, especially on TikTok, the amount of people who are defending this healing web and saying, y'all asleep, you have no idea what's going on coming and just like defending it being, and especially because it's about pregnancy, the video is about the pregnancy. So many women are like, I had a C-section birth and this happened. I gave birth in the hospital and this happened. And it's not to shame any woman who have done that. It's That's not what it's about. The map just literally outlines what the causes are and how Western medicine tries to heal it versus holistic medicine and the healing and different interpretations and what you can do for that one thing. So there's no shame in 
if you've done these things, it's just showing you how it's all interconnected. So man, if I haven't sold you on this, like just go take a look at it by now. It's not, it's not even my web, but it's incredible. So yeah, that's called the healing web. And I hope that answers your questions. Yeah. It's just a really, really very interesting web to download. I actually want to send it to a few different people now that I'm thinking about this out loud. It's a thought I'm going to have to come back to. Eliminate guesswork from your wellness plan with Inside Tracker. Created by experts from Harvard and MIT, Inside Tracker uses the power of your body's biomarker data to reveal what you need to live longer. You'll receive specific nutrition, exercise, supplement, and lifestyle recommendations, providing insight that goes well beyond what you can get from generic blood work. And since May is Women's Health Month, Inside Tracker is unveiling an upgraded ultimate plan that includes three new hormone markers that are critical to measure during a woman's reproductive and menopausal years. And because it is Women's Health Month, Inside Tracker is not charging for these three new hormone markers. Only for May, though. For a limited time, biohacking with Brittany listeners can get 20% off Inside Tracker's new ultimate plan, which includes the estradiol, progesterone, and TSH biomarkers, which are the new ones that have been added. With Inside Tracker, discovering what your body needs is no longer a guessing game. Visit insidetracker.com slash biohacking Brittany to get 20% off. That's insidetracker.com slash biohacking Brittany to get 20% off today. Okay, next question. Jessica from Florida. Ooh, this is a good question to end the note on. I feel like we just went a little dark and a little deep, and now I'm going to lighten things up. So what are functional foods and how do they help women's health? Jessica in Florida, are you in Orlando? I can meet you in a few weeks if you want to come to the biohacking conference or Miami in October. I will be there again. So Jessica, thank you for your question. So functional foods, very, very interesting. Why is it interesting? Because this is a space that I feel like has not yet been oversaturated. And let me explain by what I mean by that. So functional foods are foods that offer additional health benefits beyond their basic nutritional value. They contain specific bioactive compounds or components that contribute to the prevention or management of certain diseases or conditions. Functional foods play an important role in women's health by supporting overall well-being and addressing specific health concerns, of course. So there are definitely some examples of functional foods we find in nature. So let me give you a few examples. So flax seeds. Flax seeds are rich in lignans, which are a type of phytoestrogen. These compounds can help balance hormones and reduce the severity of menopausal symptoms. Flax seeds are also a good source of omega-3 fatty acids, which support heart health. You can add ground flax seeds to your morning smoothies, sprinkle it on yogurt, or use it in baking recipes. Another example is soy. I don't particularly tolerate soy very well, but some women do. Soy products such as tofu or edamame contain isoflavonoids. That's not how you say that. Isoflavins. <laughs> oh, wow. You can tell it's the end of the podcast because it's my pronunciation is going out the window. So, which is another type of phytoestrogen. Estrogen. So, these have been associated with reducing the risk of breast and uterine cancers, supporting bone health, and alleviating menopausal symptoms. Obviously, it's pretty easy to incorporate soy. Another good one is like turmeric. So I think a lot of people know about this one. Turmeric contains an active compound called curcumin, which has potent anti-inflammatory properties. It may help reduce the risk of chronic diseases such as heart disease, arthritis, and certain cancers. Turmeric can be added to various dishes or consumed as a supplement, which we see often now. And you can add it to curries and soups and golden milk recipes and things like that. So these are just a few examples of functional foods. So I love that 
I love that this was brought up because I am very interested in the functional food space from a business standpoint. So if you go to my website, for example, if you go to my website right now, at the top, you'll see a banner that says hormone balancing chocolate recipe for free, free download, whatever it says. And that is a perfect example of functional foods. So we're taking something like chocolate, we're making it more functional by adding ingredients that are going to help balance your hormones. And the ingredients in there that do that are ashwagandha. It's like, I think it's ashwagandha, maca, and I don't even remember because I, I wrote it so long ago now. But that is the perfect example of a functional food. It's like, here's something that's healthy for you and has a, a lot of nutrients, but when there's something added to it for a recipe for the sake, there's additional benefits to it. So it's interesting. And I'm saying this now because I'm thinking of actually pushing this further in my business. So maybe I'll do like a little test because the amount of people listening right now at this end of this podcast episode are is very slim, probably, although I get over 10,000 downloads a month now, but I'm going to say this anyway. So if you're still listening, I am thinking about creating a line of functional chocolate for women. Now, I don't want to give too much away because... I probably shouldn't (laughs) legally. However, I would love to see in the chocolate space, first of all, chocolate that's healthy enough that I would eat it as a nutritionist. So it would have to be keto and paleo and definitely not have any soy in it whatsoever. And I would love for it to do more than just be chocolate. So I would love for it to have ingredients in it that help different phases of women's life. So for example, something for hormones, you know, seed cycling maybe, or fertility chocolate, pregnancy chocolate, postpartum, perimenopause, menopause, period. And not just like, hey, here's this chocolate for menopause, but rather what are the common symptoms that women deal with during menopause? Okay. So hot flashes, fatigue. Okay. What ingredients have been scientifically researched that show that reduce that? What adaptogens, what herbs, and then how can we actually incorporate that into a chocolate where they take a square a day and it has a therapeutic amount of that ingredient in it, which then helps reduce those symptoms and helps them manage their symptoms. Because I I like this idea more than supplements. I think Everybody has a supplement line. Everyone's taking a million supplements and I'm just kind of sick of it. I don't want to do that. And I was like, why don't we just create a line of functional chocolate for women that does a lot and all women, like women who are struggling to get pregnant, like, can we add maca and help increase her libido every single day? And what can we add for stress management for her? Okay, so maybe ashwagandha. And how do we get enough in it so that she can take a piece every single day and it can help manage these symptoms again? And so I think that's really where the sweet spot is. And it's like that with any time you take adaptogens in general, just talking about adaptogens, is like you really have to take it every single day for about 90 days for it to really help with what it's supposed to help with. And That's why I kind of love this idea because imagine just subscribing to chocolate that is healthy, that I think is healthy. So if I would eat it, I have like very strict standards. If I would eat it, especially as a nutritionist, then I feel like it is healthy enough, but also does more for you and really supports women. You know, like that's kind of just what I want to see out there on the market. That's what I want to see for, for women in general. And to be honest, If this existed, I would buy it and I would subscribe to it and I would, I would already have it. Like, especially as someone who right now has irregular periods and irregular menstrual cycle, and I'm not trying to conceive right now, but I'm in my preconception era. So if I, if someone said, Hey, take this chocolate every single day, this small piece, it's 
48 calories, 50 calories, whatever it is, it you agree with all of the ingredients in there. There's no soy, there's no cheap, crappy sugar. It's all, you know, very clean keto, paleo, and it has these extra ingredients in it. And this is actually going to help regulate your menstrual cycle. I'd be like, yeah, great. 40 bucks a month for a month's worth, whatever the price is. I don't care. Subscribe, send it to me. I don't want to think about it again. And I'm good. Cool. Thanks. And same with fertility. Same with, okay, I'm ranting now, but same with fertility, same with postpartum. Postpartum, I would love to produce something that helps with baby blues, postpartum anxiety, postpartum depression and stress. Like all of that type of thing is like, how can we really support women during their different phases of their life without a freaking supplement? Okay. And so this is kind of what I'm thinking about lately. Now, if you're still listening, (laughs) if you love this idea, send me a DM. Maybe this is going to be my test. Okay. I want 20 women. Actually, I don't care if you're a woman. I don't care what you are. I want 20 people to reach out to me on Instagram. And if 20 people listen to this and like this idea, then I'll do it. Okay. I'll do it. Launching January, 2024. I'm not kidding. I like, I'm not kidding. 20 people, 20 people. I want you to reach out. I want you to send me a message on Instagram at biohacking Brittany and say, Hey, I heard your podcast episode. I listened to the end. I heard you talk about the chocolate idea. Yeah, I'm in do it. And I'm going to count and I'm going to report back on my podcast. If I hit 20, if I don't hit 20, maybe I'll give it, I'll give it a week. I'll give it a week, maybe two weeks maximum for those 20 people. Because, and you know why I'm doing that is because I know that I would buy this and I know that my hormone balancing chocolate recipe on my website has over a thousand downloads already. And I launched it less than a month ago, but I want more market validation. I want more women to say, yeah, I would buy this. And it's funny because actually when I've started telling my friends and family about this idea, Every single time I tell a woman, oh my gosh, their face lights up. They're like, yep, absolutely do it. Please. You're telling me I can have chocolate every day and it's healthy for me. Yep. I don't need to know anymore. My mom said that my mother-in-law said that my girlfriends have said that. So it's so funny telling women about it because it's almost like an excuse to indulge in chocolate. And I think that's fine. I like, absolutely. That's great. Again, if you're one of those people or you know somebody, reach out to me. I want to hear from you. I really want to hear from you. And I haven't talked about this on Instagram or TikTok or anywhere else, and I probably won't because (laughs) my podcast platform is a lot smaller and it's more intimate and I kind of like it like that. And so I want to keep it here until I announce it in the places where I have a bigger audience. So thank you for listening to this podcast episode. This was a ton of information. I ranted about a bunch of things, but that's kind of what I'm here for is to just share my thoughts on wellness and health and everything like that. I look forward to hearing from you and I will catch you later this week for another episode. Thanks for listening to another episode of Biohacking with Brittany. If you're interested in finding the show notes or the sponsors for this episode, you can do so on my website, which is biohackingbrittany.com. Remember to follow me on Instagram where I'm most active. My handle is at biohackingbrittany. And if you're interested in working together and you want to email me directly, you can do that. My email is info at biohackingbrittany.com. And I look forward to hearing from you and having you tune in next week.